Uh, hey everyone, uh, it's Fred Ditzian. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I wrote a topic analysis about the new March-April topic about food security, uh, and there are a few things that I think that this video analysis might address that I think my analysis didn't cover, and I think it might also help you in terms of how you approach preparing for this topic and also competing for it in order to ensure uh, your future debate success. So the First issue I think that you should always think about when uh, uh, approaching this topic is how do you do prep for this topic. A lot of uh, a lot of you are probably crunched for time and have already just done a lot of prep on GemFeb, which means a lot of you are probably also burnt out uh, in terms of doing preparation. So I think that some of the things that might help if say you're lazy like me or uh, if you just don't have the resources or time to actually pr uh, put up together all of the prep necessary to do well on this topic, I think there are a few uh, key solutions. So first of all, there are tons of back files, uh, impact files that I think that a lot of uh, nuanced affirmatives could impact you, especially on, on an issue such as uh, food security. Uh, I already know that on the uh, uh, from my research on the policy topic about ocean development, there are lots of apps involving aquaculture and fisheries that could easily be cross-applied within the uh, Lincoln-Douglas community that I think could be strategic. In addition to uh, other former topics like food aid, like the food aid topic, or the uh, I think it was the conditions on aid topic that might also include food aid, uh, that might help uh, put together a a AF case very quickly that still is good. Um, that being said, another thing that you need to keep in uh, into account when you're doing your preparation for uh, this new topic is what tournaments you're going to. And uh, this is something I had previously addressed, but to just expand on this issue. Um, a lot of state tournaments don't have uh, lots of like tab judges or like uh, fill heavy judges, or, or it really just sort of depends on like what area you're from. Uh, but oftentimes uh, the pool will be a a combination of both lay rounds uh, and uh, policy judges that are from the local area, uh, such as was, such was the case at least for uh, here at Florida State's. Um, and so, obviously, you need to have diverse and adaptable cases. Uh, for example, on the Jan Feb topic, there were prisons cases that could be very persuasive, but at the same time, you can make it you can implicate it as a utilitarian plan uh, or uh, just a, sort of like a philosophic you know day on AC. Uh, but the idea is that you want to have a very comprehensive case position that can be adapted to a diverse panel of judges. So uh, something something similar to that would definitely be effective. Uh, for example, uh, we, uh, for example, one app that I heard was uh, advocating for a transition to veganism, uh, and obviously that had a lot of deontic critical and utilitarian impacts that proved to be very successful throughout, st uh, throughout the uh, varsity state tournament. Uh, so that would probably be the best way to do that because you definitely need your preparation to be uh, adaptive, as I'd previously mentioned. So that being said, uh, I also had mentioned before that there is an issue with the plans debate on this topic, which is that food security is just an end. Uh, it's not like a particular method or a particular policy like the living wages, uh, and it's not like some sort of uh, – it, well, it's just not that. It's just not an implementable policy, which means that there are obviously some sort of there, – there are some difficult T issues that need to be resolved. Uh, the crux of a lot of topicality arguments that I think are going to say why plans are bad on this resolution will be something to the effect that uh, most apps on this topic and most apps are on this topic affects topical, uh, which I previously mentioned. So the implication of these affects topical arguments are generally things like limits and predictability. So I think that a smart affirmative debater, the way that they should approach their interpretation of the resolution should be a way – should provide limit standards – uh, for how we determine whether or not your advocacy is predictable. And I think a really good way to approach this through the topic literature would be to identify very key foods, uh, food security organizations such as the FOA uh, or the United Nations that probably has uh, divisions dedicated to uh, enhancing food security uh, and, and using some of their advocacies because that would obviously be fairly predictable and could uh, provide a, a good limit set on, on what app counts as food security uh, if, like, say, an organization is – typically uh, uh, designed to alleviate food security issues, then it would certainly make it uh, intrinsic to the topic. And also, you could definitely make the argument that uh, if you did like just like any sort of base research on this topic, my plan would have come up, and so you should have seen it coming. Obviously, there are other more generic uh, reasons why you, sh why you should also prefer plans, uh, you know, that there being a government actor, uh, and also... Um, uh, perhaps also it just probably just allocates more neg uh, ground for the negative and the affirmative. Probably uh, just recent genetic reasons why plans are good or bad would also help. But I think that 
uh, contextualizing the AC within uh, a particular uh, well-known food security organization or a uh, well-known plan uh, would definitely be a way to resolve this issue. So then the second issue is uh, is how do you uh, run these utilitarian or these like plan positions that would be strategic on this, on this topic? So uh, I think that one of the things that a lot of afterbearers need to keep in mind is that a lot of the disads that the negative is going to run uh, are going to be very generic in nature. Um, obviously, first of all, uh, the negative is also in sort of an issue in terms of, of developing specific uh, to every specific advocacy. So a lot of their <clears throat> a lot of their links are obviously going to be very gener uh, general in nature. So I think that most smart AF plans should discuss specific food resources that are in the decline, or maybe a specific form of implementation that uh, gets out of common criticisms. Like for example, that food security requires clearing uh, clearing the uh, clearing forests in order to grow more food. Uh, so uh, I think that that is definitely a smart way to uh, approach that. In addition to having things like a multi uh, multiple actors doing the res doing the resolution to avoid common criticisms as well as such as backsliding or uh, just like you know governments just in general ignoring their obligation to provide food security. So uh, I think that that's definitely a, a good way for apps to approach it. Specificity, I think, is the most important uh, aspect in terms of having a plan. You want to make sure that uh, your scenarios are uh, that your scenarios are very specific in nature because most dissets are not going to be specific to your app. Uh, that being said, how should negatives approach this utility debate uh, if there is uh, such a such the occasion where you have a policy judge evaluating the round? So, <coughs> so I think there. <coughs> <clears throat> so I think there are a few things. <clears throat> First of all, uh, something I had previously mentioned was that we actually currently have enough food to feed everyone in the world. The real issue is is an issue of distribution, which is also something I think that the applications should speak to the question of. But also, if it is an issue of distribution, then lots of counter plans would work on this. Food sovereignty is definitely one of them. Uh, however, I think that counter plan is far more critical in nature, and I think that there are other strategies that might also work. Uh, for example, um, I've seen evidence that says that the that free market would definitely solve. Uh, I've also seen arguments like, for example, that the right to food being a legally enforceable right is also another viable counter plan. But I think the main crux of these counter plans will be just uh, showing why a, the government being a distributor of food is perhaps a bad idea and how there is either an alternative actor or an alternative system that doesn't require food security as a way of solving for the app. Especially when you consider that since we already have enough food, there are lots of dissets that could apply to a lot of ACs that try to expand the amount of food in the world. Uh, for example, just think if the United Nations started giving out free food in a third world nation or uh, sorry, a, a lesser developed country, um, uh, and what happens to all the agricultural workers that depend that whose livelihood depends on that? Uh, there is definitely a, a question or an issue of how giving out free food would affect uh, food prices and also just uh, the uh, inflation. So there are lots of uh, econ dissets that most apps will inevitably link to, and in addition, there are lots of counter plans that can also solve for that issue. For example, a good combination might be like an inflation dissed, just showing why giving out free food is bad and why free market would allow for inflation to naturally adjust. Uh, and there's all sorts of other combinations like that. But uh, the idea is that you definitely first of all want to dissed that you know all ass will cause. And uh, something like just like increasing the amount of free available food seems like most apps are going to violate. Or uh, the agricultural uh, land clearing one uh, that I had previously mentioned. Uh, so I think that uh, making the resolution a question of how we actually distribute that food rather than whether or not we ought to give or not give that food is perhaps the most strategic way for a neg LARPer uh, to address the topic. Um, yeah, the now that I've sort of discussed that, I think another thing that needs to be discussed are, I guess, like the philosophic positions on this topic. Uh, I had mentioned that um, that it would be a question of beneficence, whether or not people have, I guess, a duty to be beneficent to others. Um, that being said, that is a very gen general and generic argument, and sort of falls back into the same issues that a lot of these other positions might have, which is that they're too generic, which means that lots of back files will apply, uh, and then you'll just have a difficult 1AR. So, other things that you also might want to consider, uh, something that's been uh, relatively popular uh, is uh, Levinas frameworks. A lot of people have gotten very privy to these sorts of arguments, and I think that Levinas would definitely be a good philosophic uh, position to have uh, on either side. I've, I've actually seen the argument run uh, as a negative position, but I think it makes far more sense 
uh, considering Levinas, uh, far more sense that Levinas would affirm under this topic, given that uh, Levinas just says that we have an infinite, ob infinite obligation to the other, uh, and obviously that would probably entail that we would give food to someone regardless of the cost. Um, so that is definitely one way to approach it. The other thing that I think uh, needs to be considered at the crux of the topic is uh, the right to food. Uh, this is actually something that was a recurring term that I saw in my searches on the topic that I think uh, there is a great deal of philosophic literature to research, uh, philosophic literature to um, build your cases off of that uh, I think will definitely be strategic on this topic. Uh, so if you just do some more preliminary, re uh, some more preliminary research on what the right to food is, what it means, and what other philosophers have to say on it, I think that you might find some specific positions that that are more explicitly affirming than just some generic beneficence argument. Uh, the other thing to consider for these philosophic positions is, once again, you probably do want it to be implementable. For example, uh, in the example of the veganism app, uh, obviously we have a deontic obligation not to harm animals, or at least supposedly we do. Uh, and uh, yet the AC is still implementable, which means that you could have like uh, advantages uh, as an underview uh, in case you find yourself in a position where LARPing is your only strategy to win. Uh, that being said, uh, other things that are sort of positive that might uh, might make you lean towards having more philosophic uh, philosophic heavy position would be that the topicality debate is most certainly on your side. Uh, this is something that that I've been uh, that I mentioned uh, multiple times, but I think it is definitely a good one to note that a uh, plan text on this topic doesn't really make any sense uh, because like every plan text on this topic is most likely uh, is most likely. Uh, effectually topical. Now, as for the negative, I think that uh, another way to approach this, and uh, aside from just like I implies canon sees, or any sort of like Malthusian position, is also just like where are the uh, where's the uh, where the uh, where's the underlying logic of the right to food? For example, uh, many authors discuss the right to food in in sort of the same way that we sort of discuss like why beneficence is a duty, which is just that certain people need certain things and that we universally have to admit this. First of all, I would obviously find this claim contestable. But the other thing is is uh, I think the negative should bring up the, uh, the negative philosophically speaking needs to approach this issue of like okay if we have the right to food and is justified by X logic, how far does that extend? Uh, and there are lots of uh, deontic violations that you can get out of this, lots of side constraint arguments that you can make. For example, uh, would food security necessarily mandate imminent domain or the use of GMOs or other things that might be ethically problematic that the negative can criticize the affirmative for? Uh, and also, uh, I think that there's probably a question of like deontic trade-offs that occur, uh, uh, not just like seizing property, but also um, <clears throat> I guess uh, how, uh, what exact duty does the government have to its citizens? I think that's also another independent question that a lot of libertarian and nose against these can very smartly answer saying that it's a very limited capacity. Um, now, uh, most of those nosic arguments will still actually just like say like why like using someone as a means to an end isn't justified even under utilitarian grounds. However, there definitely are aspects of uh, libertarianism that would still contest the idea that the government is obligated to do anything other than provide security. And I think that <clears throat> if there's like a certain threshold that is passed, I think that the uh, negative case can definitely make arguments that this obligation is superrogatory and not binding in any way. Uh, in addition to the more generic arguments like states aren't moral actors, um, I think that that the main um, way you want to approach negating on the topic, philosophically speaking, is just to show how the affirmative's logic for why we are obligated to do something extends too far uh, and therefore would stretch the government's obligations too thin and would probably justify too much and uh, would make the social contract illegitimate in some way. So uh, that is probably how I would uh, address the philosophic side of this resolution. Now, um, another thing – sorry I'm jumping back to, the, uh, back to this actually. Actually, no, no, never mind. Let's go to uh, crit the more critical positions on this topic. So uh, I actually feel like I misspoke about the uh, viability of critical positions being lay. Um, I think a good example of this is actually one of the most popular and common apps uh, that I've witnessed, at least at varsity states here in Florida, was actually the ableism AC. Uh, just like talking about like why people uh, who are perceived with disabilities uh, are food insecure and, and are ignored from developmental discourse. Uh, it actually turned out to be very persuasive in front of lay judges, and I think the reason is very obvious. 
because uh, there is, first of all, a great deal of sympathy involved in a position like this, but also because I think that just any sort of oppression impact uh, is probably very persuasive if just phrased correctly. And I definitely think that it hit the nail on the head, on, especially on uh, at this tournament. Uh, and I think that there's great opportunity for that uh, at others. Uh, but the main crux, and I think that the way that you want to, to approach um, – critical affirmative positions on this topic will be a question of development. So as I had previously mentioned, uh, the reason why we don't have food security everywhere is because of the way that the food, the way food is distributed and the way those distribution systems are designed. And those are ultimately a product of the way that we view development. So I think that a lot of affirmatives uh, that are critical in nature and are that have some good policy judges or some good K judges in the back of the room um, uh, could definitely go for is discuss about how the affirmative is actually a, a independent question on what developmental paradigm we adopt, uh, because obviously that will then affect the rest of the food security debate, and I think that can definitely be phrased as a as a prior question to most other questions on the topic. Um, so that, and also just like lots of reasons like why perhaps like uh, a new form of development or a new paradigm on development the affirmative provides. Uh, could either be some, in some way decolonize, uh, could help decolonize our minds, or resist capitalism, or more uh, frequently that I've seen today, uh, resisting ableism. Uh, and I think that that is definitely a really smart way to uh, approach a, a critical AC on this topic, and still turns out to be pretty adaptable. So I definitely don't, uh, I definitely think that it's a good idea to talk about dis uh, development, discourse, and paradigms. Uh, as for negative critiques. There are there were some conflicting critiques that I offered as as potential positions. One on the right being things like Nietzsche case and gift critiques, and the other ones more leaning left being like capitalism critiques, securitization, and colonial uh, and colonialism critiques. Um, a lot of you who are also still pressed for time might have to decide between uh, writing one position versus the other. So uh, I guess the other thing that we should probably discuss uh, is what are the benefits of each. I think. Uh, in my personal opinion, I always prefer going left. Uh, I think that uh, part of the reason why I prefer, I think that like capitalism critiques, securitization critiques, and colonialism critiques, I think uh, apply really well on this topic is not only because uh, there's some pretty clear topical links uh, explaining why food securitization uh, is both uh, securit uh, securitizing, uh, allows for developed countries to exploit other countries, and also is very capitalistic, at least in terms of its approach, are, are very topical in nature as opposed to the uh, more generic links that a nature critique or a gift critique might, um, might offer. Uh, but the other thing is is that there are lots of arguments and evidence that I've seen uh, in like lots of cat files uh, that you could probably easily find and download that uh, sort of discuss why the problem of food insecurity, uh, like th that isolate why the critique shows that the root cause is is either capitalism or colonialism or any other of the isms that uh, I previously discussed, uh, um, isolate those as the root cause of food insecurity, uh, which obviously has a sort of double uh, strategic benefit. In addition to having like a role of ballot and other sorts of impacts that impact Back to the critique, you now also have these root causal claims uh, that can be leveraged really well against util ACs, uh, and also I think are, are, are also fairly persuasive, although probably only runnable in front of um, uh, policy judges and, and whatever traditional LG judges that you usually prefer uh, pref. So uh, that would be my suggestion. However, for those of you that are, are really down with Nietzsche and uh, other authors like that, there still is some strategic benefit uh, to, um, I suppose, uh, swinging right when it comes to the K debate. Uh, for starters, I think that uh, you probably do have better framework arguments, uh, especially considering that uh, these critiques will be indicting the idea that we are uh, positively obligated to do one thing versus another. Uh, so it might be very strategic against like day on ACs, uh, where you know that y'all have like a panel that's like. Uh, uh, cool with either philosophic or critical positions. So there is still some pre some strategic benefit, especially on the framework debate, that I think can be uh, can make a, a Nietzsche NC or a critique uh, very very strategic. Um, so those are my tidbits on the topic. Um, and yeah, good luck. Uh, I honestly do think this is a really good topic. The wording is a little bit strange, uh, but uh, overall. Um, I think that there's some pretty good discourse that can be had on food security and the development paradigms that we've adopted. Uh, happy debating.